My name is Russ Cook and I'm attempting to become the first person ever to run the entire length of Africa. This is where I started. This is where I'm going. And this is where I am now. I've run 3,697K so far and I've got 11,303 left to go. In this episode, we run with some kids. <laughs> former plan. Hold tight. Drive 4,000K. Where are we? Middle of nowhere. Run into lots and lots of problems. We picked up a wild Stanley. Stan was like, what's happened? What's been what's been going on? Basically, mate, f all. L after L after L after L. So this is our option, right? In order to get a visa for a public Congo, either we have to go to the embassy in Cabinda or fly directly into uh, Kinshasa and get an entry, a visa on arrival. What, and then fly back to Yeah, and go there. Yeah. Do you know what the only other option would be is to fly to Windhoek and do it again in Windhoek? That actually could work, you know. Because at least in Windhoek, in Windhoek we know it's possible. The other... So the thing about our Angolan visas, if we leave and come back, we get another 30 days, which addresses another issue of the fact that we're running out of time. And the fines for overstaying your visa are pretty hefty. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, that. that night, we did nothing. Defeated. Fortunately, Jared and I got offered a night in another five-star hotel. Unfortunately, there wasn't any room for Stan or Harry. Hello, Russell. Mate, this is the best breakfast buffet I've ever seen in my entire life. Not even a breakfast buffet. Best buffet ever. <laughs> it was really good. I didn't know buffets got this good. <laughs> Let me take you for a walk along the buffet quickly. Fresh baked with some seeds, some milks. Sorted veggies for the morning, some baked beans, some mushrooms, salad, some tapas, some fresh, fresh fruit, some cheeses, some meats. The beast on his hands, all of the breads on desserts. So I got my pastries. I just wanted some croissants, you know. Russ got his pastries. This is my third or fourth If you get a five star hotel for free and got a free breakfast buffet, I see that as a challenge. I'm going to extract the maximum value out of the situation by putting myself into a food coma so I eat three days worth of food right now. <laughs> Enjoy it. Big bread. Stuff from the best breakfast of my life. I met back up with the others and we drove to the DRC embassy who would seal our fate. Should have provided enough breakfast. Yeah, we should have. That would have f***ing That would have been just one. <laughs> What's good breakfast? What's a good breakfast? Um, more mixed news. Yeah. You're not going to Kabinda, boys. Basically, she said, go back to your countries and do it. Um, and I said, yeah, we did it in Namibia. And she says, this is Angola. They said, here, they do the transit visas and visas for Angolans only. If we come back, we plead our case with her boss tomorrow at 10 a.m. here. Come back tomorrow, spend the whole day here chatting to him. They might make an exception for our case. So, um, spend the day chatting to him. Yeah. Let's go with him. They won't do me in, but when we were in the, the embassy, there was a staff on the phone with the man at the desk trying to try to organize a public Congo visa in a window and he like was shouting at him like, no, we don't do it here. Go back to South Africa. Oh boys. And we back. Where have we just been? We were at a five star hotel, where were you? <laughs> 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 we had smoked salmon for breakfast and these numpties are sitting in a car park. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't actually mind that so much if they didn't get in the car, given mind we've had no food today, and, and just tell us about the breakfast. I had loads of food, mate. <laughs> I had all of the food. All of it. Went to the DRC embassy, it was not good. Started with It's Impossible, which is never words we wanted here. Famously. But also, words I've heard a lot in my life and always turned out to be bullshit. We've got a few connects now. Friend of a friend is um, related to Minister of Defence of DRC. Decent. Help. Full us fails, go to the embassy again tomorrow to chat directly with uh, the ambassador himself. Chat. Chat, as in yeah. chat with Benjamin Franklin. Yeah. <laughs> what are the several options we have? Number one is 
wait here and chat to the ambassador tomorrow and, and see if we can contacts. sweet talk them into her because if we can do that that means we can go straight to the drc from here option number two would be to go to cabinda and try the embassies there cabinda is another angolan city number three would be for me to go to windhook basically that would just cost a lot of money yeah so we're trying we to figure know. out if we can wait a day and do it quicker more efficiently and, and pure way cheaper in angola and not have to leave luanda i think it probably looks like a hold tight till the morning ah oh, we'll have to see we'll have to see what what comes from the day we spent the next few hours deliberating our options until a new contact pulled through with some information so just got off the mic the phone with um our friend and he said we, you know we went to the republic of the congo embassy yesterday and they said no no visa he was like nah sorry i don't know and he spoke to the guy from the drc and the drc embassy said that they've run out of stamps the luanda embassy cannot give us drc visa so if we go to cabinda then they'll get they'll give us like a, a visa there like either that? way i'm gonna have to go to cabinda anyway you can get it all sorted in Angola. yeah this is pretty sick there was a drop of hope again that night we were hosted by some wonderful friends of Mufana who we met at our last hotel, Bruno and Jefferson. These guys were unbelievably kind, hosting us, feeding us, and drinking us to the floor for free while we figured out what to do. And they also had the best dogs ever. Hey, pup. It's so cute. It's a Yorkie, it's never calm. Oh, it's a Yorkie. <laughs> this is like this country. Yeah. Oh, it's so sweet. The next day, we headed back to the van parked at the other side of the city so we could visit the embassy again. Unfortunately, there was a problem. Yeah, we've had a little bit of a bust with uh, <laughs> the um, visas and everything. Oh, I'll keep it like a number <laughs> So we can't get in. We go to the school, chat to some kids, um, tell them about the project. And uh, I think they're doing a walk for today. Yeah. yeah they so should be doing, doing they should be walk. doing a walk for now. And okay. then at the end, you can do the speech yeah. and chat to the kids. And, cool. and Hugo's also organizing all of this. This is Hugo. Bye, people. <laughs> and maybe 200. 200. Wow. wow. Okay. Let's awesome. Let's do it. Russ is going to inspire people. The reason I'm here today is because I've got some very, very special visitors. See the gentleman in the yellow? Oh. And you see the man in the black? Yeah. Okay. That gentleman in the yellow with the big hairy beard. He runs 60 kilometers a day. Yeah. <laughs> he is running all the way from the southernmost point in South Africa to the northernmost point in Africa. Firstly, let's have a round of applause for all of your amazing efforts this morning. <laughs> Me and Jared and two of my friends started at, at the most southern tip of South Africa 77 days ago. I've been running every day since um, 60 kilometers most days. Has, it, has anyone ever done what you're trying to do? No one's, no one has done this before. Now I'm trying to be the first person ever in history to run the entire length of Africa. Ayana, um, why did you faint? What happens if I faint? That's very hard work, but keep going and going and going, and your body adjusts to it eventually. A lot of people always tell me that no, can't do this, can't do that. You know, I decided no one can tell me what I can do. I, I decide, and so here we are. They like, really just asked me, what time do you wake up? And the teacher was like, tell him 2 a.m. <laughs> 2 a.m. <laughs> they were funny though, weren't they? They were. I love the question about, uh, do you ever need a poo? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's that's definitely a Russell yeah. question to get. Is that the hardest run? Right. <laughs> it's the first run we've done Done. Together. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
Thank you. A couple of weeks ago, you were stirring your protein steak with a stick. Explain to us how sticks are the most useful tool in the world as well. I ain't got a comb right now. So you know the first tool that apes learned to use was a stick? It doesn't surprise me, they're f***ing everywhere. Yeah, to be fair. Mate, they're like other animals as well that use sticks. Like f***ing beavers. They use logs. They also use sticks. And stones. And stones. Would they break their bones? But words are never hurting. Words will never hurt beavers because they don't understand them. I don't know. You could scream really loud in a beaver's ear. <laughs> it might hurt him. Damn! <laughs> Days passed at Bruno and Jefferson's and nothing from our various efforts came through. Five days after I stopped running, we came up with a desperate backup plan. To avoid the cost and impurity of flying, we would drive 2,000k back to Windhoek. But it was genuinely dangerous. Yo, 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 yo. We've been in Luanda for about a week, nearly. Basically, it looks like it's just not gonna happen in Luanda. So we had to come up with a plan B, and the plan B is drive to Windhoek which is the capital city of Namibia. So we're gonna drive there now, it's a 24 hour drive and we've left Harry here. So me, Stan and Jared are gonna just chop it up. How long have we got to do the 24 hour drive? We've got about 40 hours to do it. But also in that 40 hours, we need to get uh, a new set of tires and cross a border. Jared was saying that we shouldn't drive at night because there's loads of like wild animals that get bugged out by the lights and they end up like totaling cars and shit. We can't really afford to not drive at night at all though, so we're gonna have to drive at night a bit. Um, we're just avoiding the most dangerous place. Yeah, yeah. Well, if Russ Cook says it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be right? fine. Yeah, yeah. That's why we're all here, so. Exactly. The first few hundred km went by without any issues. Hello, Stanley. Hello. Where are we? We are at the spot where you boys got wrong. So Pretty much to, to seek revenge. We're keeping an eye out for motorbikes. Yeah. Uh, and then Russ is on the roof currently with an AK-47. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're about 10 hours into the drive. On Google Maps, we're only seven and a half hours in. So I'll go to for the rest of the journey. We reckon it's probably gonna take about 30, between 30 and 35 hours to get to bit We will update you when something interesting happens. Hopefully none of it will be interesting. Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah, that's the truth. Yeah. Got two in an hour's time with four of our tires at best. Hi, Stan. Hi. What have you done? Uh, hit a pothole. How hard? Quite hard. <laughs> Mate, it was one of those really small, really hidden. It was f***ing this wide, but deep. So that hissing noise you hear in the background is our entire deep rim deep like rim right. that's fucked. It's just about finished. And the tire that, oh, it's fuck fucked. Yeah, no patching that shit. And where are we? F knows, mate. Middle of nowhere. Oh no. Happy campers. So the spare wheel we thought was, what was wrong with it? It's the one that I hit against the curb. Basically it has a puncher, but we have a puncher repair kit. Yeah. Big brain! We repair this tire and we can switch it over and hopefully get back on road. I think that's the one thing this mission was lacking. It's like a 4 a.m. middle of the night, stopped on side of road with a breakdown. I'll just check for lines quick. I got 99 problems and 98 of them are going to be fixed with super glue. Action right there. Flat tire, no problems. I'm gonna get so much f***ing lash pack on YouTube. But it was no use. Hang on, we're, we're driving here. How did, how did that happen? I um, made use of an old proverb. When in doubt, use a hammer. Smack the shit out of the other tire to try lock the bead back in place. Smashed with a hammer and now we're on the road. It holds air, it seems. Back on road, what's the plan? Where are we going? Back on road, let's try to get to the first petrol station. See if we've lost too much. Bang on, one step at a time. Let's just get wherever we can go safely. Oh, Good moment to ask you how the road quality is. It's pretty dog shit. Can't lie. It's 
pretty horrendous. It, it makes you more alert though, because yeah, you actually true. have to watch the road, like, especially if you ain't got full beans done for it. Yeah, mate, 100%. We made our way to a petrol station to check if the tyre was holding air. At this point, our air compressor blew and deflated the tyre. Great. We were stuck until the morning. Right, wheel off. These very kind men offered us to take our wheel to the next town to get air in it. Our amigo is bouncing. Not long after, thanks to the help of these people, we were finally back on the road, but the potholes weren't finished with us yet. I wish I shot what just happened, but uh, what just happened, Russ? <laughs> Play Mario Kart out here. <laughs> Angola has some of the maddest potholes I think I've ever seen. Sometimes they just come out of nowhere. Like, look at this. It looks like perfect tar. And then bang. that's a pothole. That's the whole road as a pothole. Like, it's not just a pothole, like that thing will take off all your wheels if you yeah. run through that. Sometimes you don't see it all because of the way that the road is, and then you just have the last minute swerve. I mean, that's, I assume, how Stan drove into the pothole earlier. How oh, those nerves feeling after you basically just like got to the brink of tipping the van? I reckon she had more, more to go. Oh, I don't think she did. Another 300k later, we stopped to give our Nelly some fresh kicks. We're in. Um... Lubanga again. Annoyingly, we found out that the border crossing back into Namibia shuts at 6 p.m., which we've got literally no hope of making. So we're gonna head to the border tonight. We'll sleep, which should be nice. I look forward to that. And then we're gonna head uh, across into Namibia in the morning. Thursday no morning, we'll uh, be back uh, at the embassy. Yeah. Fresh kicks. Look at them slick. Also, steak, sausages, bacon. Beans Bacon. in a mug. Beans in a mug. Beans in a mug. <laughs> I like the little red stripes as well. Very yeah. Excited. Red stripes famously actually do make you go faster. Yeah. Well. It's really cool. Cool. That's done. It's hashtag science. science. <laughs> Stand head of chair. <laughs> Armed and ready for the potholes, we drove through into the evening, the night, and the following morning, breezing across the Namibian border. Where are we now? Right, boys and girls, we made it to Namibia. We have been driving for quite a long time now, probably about 42 oh, hours, yeah, something like this. Yeah. So the Angolan Namibian border closed at 6 p.m. last night. We didn't make it there in time because of tires and f whatever else we've done in the last two days, can't really remember. Slept at the border last night, went f swimmingly through this morning with minimal hassle to be fair. Now we are back in the wonderful Namibia. We've all been chatting about how much we miss Namibia. I already enjoyed our time in. Yeah, agreed. Got some crisps and some snacks. How's the snack game rating? Snack game here is fucking strong, bruv. I'm very happy because I can get a pie again. Um, and also, we've been talking about I really want a pie. <laughs> Final seven hours of driving went by with no issues. And we arrived in Windhoek late at night. We stayed with Evie and his friends from the Windhoek Runners and they looked after us while we made our visa preparations. Morning boys. Hello. Hello. We're gonna go get visas. If we can talk them up, we will. Or we'll butter them up. <laughs> Maybe we should bring them some butter. Some actual butter. <laughs> <laughs> and just start buttering up their desk. Or put $400 in the butter. <laughs> she starts saying, I'll just reach for the butter. So I'm Please, just about to Please I, to I was told this would work, so <laughs> How are you feeling about our chances, Stan? You're optimistic. I'm fairly optimistic to be yeah. fair. I don't think you could ask two better men for the job really. Buongiorno. Como se va? Buongiorno. You boys are fing delirious as well. <laughs> it was fing cold last night. I'm just suddenly like Yeah, where where are we by the way? We're in Ventuk. Yeah, Evie's gaff. You might remember Evie from uh, uh, episode. What, did that Do you want to eight, to it? seven, six? I, I want you to say all of them, and then I'll just just count from one to twenty for me. Um, you might have seen Evie in episode eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, boys. Yeah. You're off over there filming in the embassy wasn't an option but somehow with my riz and jared's good looks we somehow managed to get both visas done in one day this was better news than we could have ever expected and meant we left just 48 hours after we arrived we set off at 2 a.m for an easy drive to the border and we felt on top of the world but this is project africa and our luck had to change we don't have to yeah let's go to Malaya. let's go to Malaya. we know 
o número de telefone, é a cidade. Não, esse é o segundo. O primeiro desejo que vamos fazer, que vamos fazer o corpo. Vamos chegar até o conjunto, porque isso é muito importante. Sim. Vamos começar a fazer isso esse longo caminho, sem mostrar nenhum evento. Eu estava esperando que fosse um evento interessante. Mas é isso. E aqui estamos. Como eu disse, o governo oficial de fotografia para o meu CV agora. I think, um, super official, is it? Super over official. Yeah. Yeah, super much oh, undercover. Super much undercover best. The international global international personality of the public. So I'm in the car. It is extremely hot in the van. I'm sweating. It's like half past four. The border closes at 6 p.m. West African time. The boys are still not done. We got to the border and they basically said to us that the way we understood the visas was incorrect. I'm South African and I have a South African passport, so I don't need a visa to enter Angola, unfortunately. And we asked them as well, like when we were at the border, can we come back into Angola? And he said, yes, good. So there was just confusion around all of this. The boys had to do a emergency visa. And apparently there's a woman in Luanda who is now sorting out their visas. And they were charged in essence of 300 quid to actually get these visas sorted at this notice, but now we sit. Yo. What's happening? Bad news. It's bad news. No visa. He said um, an old Nessie classic. Uh, maybe tomorrow. I if history tells us anything, maybe tomorrow means definitely not tomorrow. <laughs> so we're going to be enjoying life in no man's land for maybe a couple of days. Are we in Namibia or in Angola? No, we're in no man's land. We're signed out in Namibia. Yeah. We're not signed into Angola. We belong to no one. That is quite cool, to be fair. He said, he said, don't come in till two, so. He also, the sentence before that said it's better if you come in the morning. Yeah, I didn't really understand. <laughs> make it make sense. Let's settle in. We've got salami, cheese, sandwiches for dinner with mayo. <laughs> mayo. <laughs> I don't hear him whining yet, so they're not working, obviously. <laughs> we settled into a cozy night in no man's land before heading back to the office in the morning full of apprehension. Morning, what's happening? What's happening, Nish? Hold tight, no visa today. So basically they're saying that the computer system in Luanda is still down, so they can't process any visas. Mm. I was saying to my family last night, this is one of the nicest campsites we've had in a while, so. It is rather nice, it's, it's chilled. Quite protected, there's a tree to piss in. I can't even cross back over the border. Technically, even though we're all in the same spot, me and Russ are in no man's land and Jared is in Angola currently, hmm. legally speaking. It's annoying, but it's like, what's the difference between a 13 day delay and a 14 day delay? Mm -hmm. This was going to be our home for the next few days and we had to make the most of it. He's teeing up. <laughs> it's a hole in one. It's a hole in one. What's the plan here? Cricket. <laughs> it's like a machete. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't throw the bat. Oh. No. Done. Out. Done. It's the whole van, the it's wickets. It's the whole van, the wickets. Think you much to work with there, did you, Sam? You ever do like any sports in school, Stan? No. You ever like. <laughs> I did all of my frisbee in school. When he tried to catch the sellotape like this, that was the answer. We yeah. Got. What do you have to say for yourself? School was rough. <laughs> Another night went by and we ended up back in the same office once again, hopefully for the final time. How long have we been here? 48 hours. Yeah, yeah, give or take 48 hours since we first arrived at the border. Um, and we're hopeful find the game of these and then we can leave. You know when you leave like a vegetable out in the sun and it sort of starts leaking and sort of sagging? That's what I feel like. Do you feel like a leak or do you feel like you're leaking? I feel like a leaky leak. Oh, that looks good. Yes, yes, yes. Our visas were finally sorted. All that was left was a little bit of cheeky negotiation on the price. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Visa? Yes, the visa. One, one visa. Red, 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 red. Look, we give 175,000 points. <laughs> Let's see. Read, read, read. Read, read, read. And shake hands. Best friends. Mi amigo. Amigo. Yeah, that's equal. Okay. Mucho amigo. No, that's, that's Spanish. <laughs> that means just very friends. Yeah. Very friends. <laughs> <laughs> we 
Obrigado, meu amigo. Obrigado. Okay, boys, where are we at? Angola. So we, we, basically, we basically finished finish the drive now, yeah? No, we've huh. still got a 24 hour drive to go. It took us over 48 hours to cross the border. I just don't know what could possibly go wrong. I guess we'll cut to us in Luanda. Cut to us in Luanda. We are back in Luanda. Very good. After a very bureaucratic couple of weeks, the ones and twos are finally going to return back on roads, stomping fast and hard. You did this big night shift. What did you do? 12 till 5? No. I had 12, 12 till 5 30. Like half 5, yeah. yeah. No pop tyres. How are you feeling about getting back on roads? Can't wait, mate. Cannot wait. Mate, we're on day 88. <laughs> day 88. 74 was my last running day. That's rough. So it's been a huge delay sorting all this visa nonsense out. Um, would like to finish this challenge at some point. I think we're looking at probably, from a security point of view, probably the hairiest two months coming up. I think the Algeria Mauritania bit is going to be really intense, but it'll be quite over quite quickly, the intense bit. Whereas I think this bit is going to be like quite a drawn out safety issue. We try and go in with as open a mind as possible. It's a difficult one. You need to go in with an open mind, but you also need to go in. Yeah. Not naive to what you're about to go into. Um, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> For any of that, a shower. Yeah, shower. Uh, yeah. It's been what, like. You can actually see the yeah. grease in all of our hair, man. It's yeah, been so steady. Like a solid six days since any of us have showered now. In the next episode, I reunite with Harry, meet his sister, and finally taste the tarmac one more time.